Good evening, and welcome to worship here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. You can find a bulletin and ways to give online at www.elcvienna.org. Your generosity is appreciated. A few announcements for you this evening. Our fall stewardship drive was entitled Faith Grows Here. You can still send us your commitment cards and we would be glad to receive those. Commitment forms for our 2021 giving have gone out in the mail and you can also submit a form online through our website. For more information, please contact our stewardship chairs, Greg Stolt and Erica Schmitz. We have a couple of registrations up and running for youth ministry for both our middle school and high schoolers. There is a 12 days of Christmas series of activities and next summer's month of mission. Check out your emails or contact Christian Marbach, our youth director, for more information. Our Star Tree Drive for Christmas gifts for Facets families resumes this year. You can order gifts through Amazon or donate gift cards. Again, check out our weekly email for more information or contact Jamie Constas or June Frame. Finally, on the afternoon of Sunday, December 20th, we will have a drive through nativity entitled Born in Bethlehem, the First Christmas. We are looking for volunteers to help out with that event. Please keep an eye on upcoming emails for ways to find out more and sign up. We begin our worship with the invocation. In this holy season after Pentecost, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prelude is for a thousand tongues to sing.
pray. Jesus is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set lights in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and, you're lo and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 744. In my life, Lord, be glorified. time of so many hurts, let us pray, first taking a moment in silence for reflection. From a worldwide pandemic of the coronavirus disease, we pray, heal us, O Lord. From fevers and difficulty breathing, from sickness and dying, we pray, Heal us, O Lord. From fear and worry, from stress and weariness, we pray. Heal us, O Lord. 
from isolation and loneliness, from uncertainty and loss, we pray, heal us, O Lord. From the evil of racism, from political struggles, from economic worries, we pray, heal us, O Lord. We are all ages and all colors, all genders and all creeds. We pray, heal us, O Lord. For our families and friends, all communities and all nations, we pray, heal us, O Lord. We believe in your healing, your peace, and your justice. In Jesus' name we pray, heal us, O Lord. Amen. Our special music is an improvisation on Buckhurst Run.
this evening comes from the prophet Daniel, chapter 6, verses 6 through 27. So the presidents and satraps conspired and came to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an interdict that whoever prays to anyone, divine or human, for 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and interdict. Although Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued to go to his house which had windows in its upper room, open toward Jerusalem, and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to his God and praise him, just as he had done previously. The conspirators came and found Daniel praying and seeking mercy before his God. Then they approached the king and said concerning the interdict, O king, did you not sign an interdict that anyone who prays to anyone, divine or human, within 30 days except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions? The king answered, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they responded to the king, Daniel one of the exiles from Judah pays no attention to you, O king, or to the interdict you have signed, but he is saying his prayers three times a day. When the king heard the charge, he was very much distressed. He was determined to save Daniel, and until the sun went down, he made every effort to rescue him. Then the conspirators came to the king and said to him, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no interdict or ordinance that the king establishes shall be changed. Then the king gave the command, and Daniel was brought down into the den of lions. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you faithfully serve, deliver you. A stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, so that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No food was brought to him, and, no, and sleep, sleep fled from him. Then... At break of day, the king got up and hurried to the den of lions. When he came near the den where Daniel was, he cried out anxiously to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you faithfully serve, been able to deliver you from the lions? Daniel then said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me because I was found blameless before him. And also before you, O king, I have done no wrong. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no kind of harm was found on him because he had trusted in his God. The king gave a command, and those who had accused Daniel were brought and thrown into the den of lions, they, their children, and their wives. Before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples and nations of every language throughout the whole world, May you have abundant prosperity. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion has no end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, for he has saved Daniel from the power 
of the lions. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The story of Daniel and the lion's den is a longtime favorite for all ages. Sometimes it is hard to get past the children's Sunday school version. However, in our reading tonight, we can see that there were two sets of lions and two angels as well. We may all well remember the actual lions from the den, which... Daniel was placed after breaking a bogus law, restricting prayer. Those were actual lions with claws and fangs. No doubt they were man-eaters, and everyone pretty much expected those lions to make a meal out of Daniel. Those lions come to mind quickly. But there were other lions circling Daniel, too. They had their own kind of claws and fangs as well. And they were definitely man-eaters in their own and very real way. The story tells us they were presidents and satraps and politicians of all kinds who were also called conspirators. They conspired to do away with Daniel. They went after him where they thought he was weak, but it turned out to be his strength. His faithfulness. So God sent two angels. One to deal with the furry lions. And one to deal with the other kind. One angel closed up the lion's mouths. And the other angel shut up the lion conspirators forever. One angel was anonymous. But the other was named King Darius. And like so many angels, King Darius had a message to share, a message that bears reading again, because tonight, this message is for us. May you have abundant prosperity. I make a decree that all my royal dominion people should tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion has no end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, for he has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. Unquote. While we all face the claws and fangs of all sorts of lions in our own lives, political, COVID, racism, economics, and so much more. Our faith, like Daniel's, is in God, the living God who endures forever and whose kingdom has no end. God knows all too well the lions we face and gives us the faith we need to get through whatever may come. Faith to face our lions. Faith in our God who delivers and rescues. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is number 245, Creator of the Stars of Night. Come in your holy light, we pray, redeem. 
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, and for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who've gone before us and are at rest, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our postlude is voluntary number seven based on Now Think We All Are God by Arlen Clark. 